Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Yaku, this is my workshop, and that's Damaya behind the camera. Hello Damaya. Hey guys. This week we're dealing with the polishing process. We've had some questions about how we polish our jewelry, and in this video I'm hoping that we're going to be able to share all of what we do so that it might help you in your polishing process. So stay tuned and we will show you how to get the best polish out of your jewelry every single time. We're going to be using this red gold 18 karat gold ring. It has an opal. I know the opal is slightly chipped, something we'll deal with later. This is a ring that actually belongs to Demaya, and so there's not like a really good example of a ring that's really broken or scratched or anything like that. But we're going to apply the process to this anyway to show you exactly how we get to the final product. I inspect the ring, I make sure that I've got a good idea of the ring is still in shape. If it's not in shape, I quickly bring it back into shape, make sure the basic structure is correct. So I'm working with the biggest things first and then bring it down to the smaller things. I'm using sandpaper at this point I don't have scratches deep enough to go back to the file but I do use a file if, the, if we've got really hard marks and I'll show you what I've done here with the silver ring for instance. I usually typically start with a 180 sandpaper and work my way around from the area where I'm starting to the end, turning the ring around, doing exactly the same. You'll note that the technique that I'm using is I'm rounding my hand with the curve of the ring and I'm also considering the concave of the outside of the ring. Each one of the rings that you're dealing with or pieces you're dealing with will be different, but in this case we're dealing with a ring so that's what I'm doing. So note how I'm using my hand to follow the curvature. From 180, I move through to 240. Now, from, I'm not jumping all the way to 400 because 240 is going to deal with the scratches that I've just created with the 180 paper. I'll end up with the 400 paper on this one because that's typically where gold, the metal is, is soft enough for me to work up to 400 if I wanted to find, finalize it from there on the polishing machine. Platinum, I would go all the way through 3000. Platinum, you take all the way down to as fine as you possibly can before you polish it. Now, we've dealt with that in previous videos. I'm starting to look at the reflection of the actual curve. The reflection will show you if your curve is consistent. If you've got any movement in the light itself, then you know that you have to work on certain areas to make sure that your reflection is right. Once I've done the sticks, the, the sanding sticks, I would take a little piece of sandpaper, fold it and run it by hand to sort of counteract the scratches that I've, that I've made. The more we work on the scratches that we've created, the less the polisher has to do, the less metal we have to take on the polishing machine. So you want to get the product to be as clean as you possibly can with the finest sandpaper as you possibly could. Uh, to make your life easier on the polishing machine. We're not there to fight scratches or marks on the polishing machine. It's there to just take out the final scratches that the final sandpaper has left on the, on, on the metal itself. Once I've worked it off by hand, I can also now turn to the finer parts. I've dealt with the bottom of the ring because that's typically where most of the scratches come from when you're picking up keys and handling things. The sides, in this particular case, I've got grooves in, so I want to deal with the inside of that groove and I'm using, I think they're called E-Flex. This is a green one with a knife edge and they really work well for giving a polish. So they're not going to cut away anything more from your ring. It's just going to give the surface a polish. Now I'm going to be dealing with the basket side of it. I'm bringing the same E-Flex 
rubber wheel and I'm running into the grooves. I'm just reminding the grooves or the, the spaces. Again, this is not going to cut away a lot into the actual ring. I'm just cleaning up those corners and giving it all the definition that I possibly can. I can now come with polish, polish uh, mops afterwards and clean that up. From here onwards, I'm going to be using my polishing mops. Try and deal with as much of the polishing on the disc itself and especially around the fine things. A big polishing mop will take detail away from your ring. So I don't mind doing the top of the shank or the sides of the shank or the shank itself. I don't mind putting onto the machine but when it comes down to the detail that I've created underneath the gallery I want to be doing that on the disc. I'm using a polish, Dialux polish. I'm using the blue one with a soft bristle white um, bristle brush and I'm gently moving it continuously as I'm going along. Now that polish and the brush, if you sit for, for long enough on gold, it will create a groove. So you don't want to sit there and just concentrate in one area. You want to continuously move it around and also make sure you can get into every little corner. If I can get the maximum polish out of that, I don't have to spend the time on the big polishing machine. The inside of the ring gets done with the same uh, soft bristle brush and then I go to the mop, which is also a soft mop to do the inside. So I've prepped the ring on the desk as far as I can get it. I'm now going to take it onto the polishing machine. Make sure your polishing machine is clean. This polishing machine won't pick up as much dust if the filters have been cleaned, so I'll go through the process of doing that. Now I'm focusing on one area at a time. I'm focusing on the outside of the ring, turn it around, do exactly the same, and then I turn it to one single side, and I slowly start working around the ring. And as I'm working around, I'm also turning it slightly so that I get a little bit of the outside as well. So I'm over polishing it in a way. Gently moving it the whole time, flip the ring around and do the same on the other side. I'm using a soft brush. You get the brushes that are for harder metals like white gold and platinum. And the one I'm using is a stitch brush, a stitch mop, because I want a gentle approach on this. I'm going to skip it over to a smaller bristle brush to get into the small details. We don't have to do much because we've already done it all. This is just an overall clean before we move over to the final polish section, which is what I'm doing right now. Final polish section is a repeat of the first section. We're going to do exactly the same except we're going to be using the, uh, the final polish, which is this red rouge polish, which I, for some other reason, I don't know why I got it or where I got it, but it works incredibly well and that's what I'm going to be using. Being an opal, you can't put that straight in the ultrasonic. There are just certain things that can't go into an ultrasonic because it will damage the stone. Emeralds, for instance, um, you wouldn't want to put tanzanites in there. You want to be cautious with those. Pearls and, and, and opals and such things. There are some stones, I, I, we can probably put a list together for you, but that you want to avoid in an ultrasonic machine, so I'm brushing it. And then once I've brushed it, 
a quick rinse to get that soap off the ring itself. And in this case, really helpful is the steam machine to make sure that I can get in between all the little diamonds doing the job that the ultrasonic would have done. And there you have it. Your polish reveals all kinds of issues with the ring, so it's a reflection of the quality of your work. Thank you very much for watching the video right until the end. Let me know if there's a different technique that you use. It's always interesting to learn. Um, we are at this point on 8,000 subscribers, so I wish you to take a small moment there to say thank you very much for subscribing. At 10,000, we're going to be giving a giveaway or we'll do something special for the channel. Uh, the support has been overwhelming and we really do appreciate it. Until next time, until next video, thank you very much for all the likes, subscribes, bell icons, you know the deal. Stay creative. We'll see you next time. Cheers.